Hello and welcome to another cast of Company of Heroes 2 1v1. Today I'll bring you McBain as the Wehrmacht versus the Pope Co. Co. I always want to say Co. 2, but it's just Co. as the Soviets. Uh, immediate uh, lock in with the airborne troops tactic, so we're gonna see some SVTs out here. I imagine about four conscripts with SVTs and a standard Wehrmacht opening from McBain down here. Uh, apologies for the video delays. I've had a couple rough days with concerning my depression and everything. It just kind of felt really dragging and useless and wasn't quite sure if I'm going the right direction. But I think that's pretty much all just nonsense of my brain. I especially struggled with finding good news for the good news portion of my channel. Which is quite telling to be fair. It's pretty hard to find good news. So if you know any like legitimately good news, objectively good news, I don't want like the dog rescued three guys out of a fire which is nice and all but I want like ob objectively good news that bring humanity a little bit forward and uh, combine us all but enough of that here comes Pope versus McBain and okay interesting capping order grabs these two um, strategic point grabs the connection point with the third squad and grabs the fuel with the first conscripts, I believe. Yes, indeed. And that was a that was pretty good timing, pretty efficient it seems. So I have like 20, 21, and it looks like McBain is not lagging behind at all. And oh, does get the full munitions cap for at least for the time being. And if my game doesn't lag out on me, we actually will see the rest of it. So nice job there, good reposition, Pope knows where that MG now is now, so there's no point in keeping it where it was. It's a mistake I often see newer players make, leaving their MGs way too long in positions where they have already been discovered and oh, doesn't get the suppression here. So these grenadiers are surprisingly not dropping any models quite yet, but I need to get out now because they're dropping very low and there we go. One model left, and oh, conscripts are chasing. But don't get it. Is it now? And now convergence on the. the oh, did get it! Mamma mia! I'm sorry to have missed that. I was so convinced he got away with that. Alas, he did not. So, McBain with a pretty good start here. Apologies for the FPS drops. It's ever since the Windows update, my performance has just been miserable in Code 2. I need to find some ways to fix that. But I hope you'll forgive me. Does disrupt the sandbag build in the middle. And surprisingly, actually, that these conscripts didn't get hammered a lot earlier. But supporting conscripts over there. He tries to stay and do as much damage as he can. Disruption and nice. Did get another model drop there, and uh, doesn't suffer a wipe in turn. Still, despite the traditional cut of being taken, there's no territory to be cut off. Pardon me. Bit of a hiccup there. And uh, keeps the entire right side to itself. Nice early mine placement. And that was the first round of engagements. Finally gets that left hand territory underway. MG sadly is gonna be a little bit out of position. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. I do feel that the game is a little bit too loud for some reason. I don't think I've changed the master volume, but I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. There we go. The enemy is taking our territory. Now I hope it doesn't it's not too silent now, but I shall have to see. Pope getting back on the map. Victory points barely touched today. Pope with a slight lead thanks to the one victory point. Oh, never mind. That actually is McBain's. So, looks like we did get to neutralize at some point. Oh, no. I'm just confused because left side is McBain down here, but he's on the right side on the map. Which is always kind of annoying. Oh, okay, never mind. He did move after building the mine. And, oh, God. Come on, go to. Thank you. Run. 
And pretty 50 50 piss, 50 50 split here. Mortar team reports ready for combat. And here come the first SVTs. And actually, it's a mortar team. That's interesting. Three conscripts into a mortar team. Usually, you always see the fourth conscript. Let's see if it works out for him. Often, sometimes leaves you a lot desire to be desired in, ta in terms of capping. But if your opponent isn't aggressive enough, and they might have played a lot of times already on the ladder against each other, so they might know their respective playstyles, you can get away with that. But generally, I do not recommend. Okay, catches these guys up because they have been idling there for quite a while. And we see a rifle nade. Yes, indeed. There we go. We are losing a sector. Okay, I think I might restart the game and hope for some better FPS and then just jump to the... I'm gonna pause at the six minute mark. There we go, SVTs force them off. Um, I'm gonna pause here. Alright, welcome back. So I do hope that fixes things, at least a little bit. So for the time being, we've just had a mine go off. But I am not entirely sure. Oh, never mind, it was the mortar. Pardon me. So sometimes if it's far away, it sounds pretty similar to a mine. So pretty good job so far. Interesting, we've got a half track that can be used to heal up his infantry squads and reinforce them on the field. Especially good against that mortar now. Because he does have an MG now. Pope does have an MG now, but it might not save his mortar. It's a little bit late on the field, but there it comes. Lucky for that Grenadier that only one model was far ahead. He's gonna drive up, pick them up. You can still pick them up while they are suppressed, not while pinned. Oh, should be getting them in there. Doesn't quite get it. Decides to just reinforce them, apparently. No, we didn't do, I didn't do that either, so that's a bit of a shame. Lost an opportunity there to stay in the field. No, it's reinforcing the top squad, but has to get out of there. After the MG pin and early AT grenades. See the half track off. Oh. 251 is relatively safe from small arms, but not impenetrable. So if he gets a second 18 aid off, he might be able to finish it off completely. But seems to be fine in that regard. Panzer Grenadier is now on the field. This gun added to the mix for Pope. Oh, there. Sadly, with a move order just straight up the middle in front of all this fire. I have to run the gauntlet there. Aye, aye, aye. Do not like these FPS drops. So sadly, no use of the half track to heal up all these basically half dead units. Would be a really nice use. He's no, he's still just running away from it. So that's a bit of a shame. Could use this up better. Uh, Pope, nice mine play. Disregards SVTs for some more mines, which is quite nice. It's not something you expect necessarily f when you're up against the doctrine. But you need to count the amount of, amount of airplanes that are coming down. And then you kind of get an idea what your enemy is up to. I am not entirely sure how much this little brush um, obstructs the view here. Nice flank with the Grenadiers up top. He grins down the middle again. Are gonna get suppressed. Sadly not put into the half track and then drove by. Let's get a flum panzer, okay. So he decides to go take that approach. So, okay, hides behind the bush for now. So is this gonna go for ground attack? Not quite. But that denies now the reinforcement and the, and the healing. And hasn't gotten anything of value out of it yet, because he did eat a shot on the way on. Oh no, drives over a mine and loses that after the upgrade. So that's about 120 munitions down the drain. I don't know if it's still 120 munitions. We'd have to check. But that was highly unfortunate. Big waste to McBain's part. Uh, better said, better mine placement by McBain. Also got some nice damage with that mine on the MG, even though no model drop. 
Oh no, a T gun there for out of position. I do apologize for these freezes. I do not know why it suddenly decides to not work properly anymore. Okay, we're gonna have we're gonna have one option left. No, we do not. Not while we're in the game. Oh, but the Pegans are gonna get a nice pick up if these engineers are... N okay, yeah, they're dead. So a bit sloppy here. By McBain and Pope. But it's still entertaining. Hey, stuff's going on. And I think we're gonna have a decent game on our hands. Maybe not by skill, but by entertainment virtue alone. Oh no, please, re okay, come on. No, thank you. But he's not gonna make it home. Ouchie boombouchie. So, I do apologize that we're not quite up to our usual status, both in performance and maybe in game quality, but... I hope you'll forgive me this once, and I'll try to make it up to you with the next one. Let's try to solve the issues we're having today. MG is getting a little bit compromised here, but just resets the fault back. Nice job, flank here. We still... do we have a mad bunker? Okay, we do have a mad bunker by now, which is nice. These pioneers are not in the 10 meter range that negates cover, so they're basically just sacrificial lambs to keep these guys busy. Ooh, lucky that the mortar didn't hit square on. Pioneers get away. These guys are not quite there. This is not quite the angle you need to have these con conscripts flanked, but they should win with only two guns available. They'd need to get pretty lucky to drop these models quick, but here come the reinforcements. Surprisingly, the SVT cons are only that one. Oh boy. And we do have Blitzkrieg Doctrine chosen, which is interesting. Is to steal our it's quite a long time since I've seen that, but it's a very good commander. Requires you to be very confident in your OS standard OS trip play, but you do get your command tank for some nice aura bonus. I do believe it's a 10% damage reduction. It used to be 20 but I think they nerfed it down to 10. Maybe 15, but I think 10. If anyone knows the exact numbers that the aura gives these days, please let me know. Okay, this boy is finally getting their bullet wounds patched up. Which is gonna be pretty nice for those guys. Could also use the med kit, field first aid kit for 50 munitions. It's not too bad. Keeps the guys on the field. Gets you back up to full health. It's, it would have been really useful on these very low grenadiers that we have seen earlier. Okay, we now have a full SVT lineup for the conscripts. Gonna have to check later if the engineers have some SVTs as well. Because they can equip those. Does get spotted by the flag itself. Enables the MG to suppress them and pin them. T70 a little bit sloppy there. Just gets immediately fausted. But engineers are close by, should be able to repair that quick, nice and quick. And these grenadiers are trying to follow up, disrupt the reinforcement, but get punished for doing that, so... Oh, same issue as before. Gets spotted and gets pinned. This, this MG has been performing pretty well, 12 kills already to its name. And here comes the Panzer IV command tank. It's decent-ish against infantry. Doesn't need veterancy to really perform in that regard. As you can see, it's pretty pretty inaccurate, especially on the move. But the aura it's, it's all what it's about. Doesn't self-buff anymore, which used to be the case, but if you just crush your enemy and then just shoot the last one in the face, you will get some value out of that one. So well done by McBain here. Pope didn't quite see that one coming. If you're uh, crushing usually works best if they're clumped up against cover, so the, the models cannot retreat properly out of the way, and that's usually when you get crushes. Ever since the cover changes, this has been different. Re beautiful rifle nade. Is it properly positioned? Decent one. But does actually get spotted, so this is not a full line of sight blocker. And now it's gone all entirely. But MG actually keeps going forward. Which is interesting. 
Oh, actually. Oh, these grenadiers. I thought it was flanked there for a second. So it should be fine because it was in front of the heavy cover. These grenadiers getting today really lucky with not dropping models way before they are basically near death. Do suffer some on retreat now though, because of caster cursed it. But there we go. Conscripts on the south getting forced off. Nice preemptive rifle nade should go out now before he drops models. Will he get away with all of them? Okay, this time he does. Nice job. And the Panzer IV Command it has been perf performing excellently, already up to 9 kills, halfway to Veteran C1. Because it's limited anti-armor capabilities, it's pretty takes a, quite a while to vet, vet these guys up. Because I believe the way Veteran C is calculated, it's how much damage you do to other units in relation to your cost and their cost. So vehicles generally with like fuel costs and high manpower costs as compared to like... Uh, reinforced conscript model at like, uh, what is it, 20 manpower? It does need a lot of infantry kills to level up. But if it can catch out the T-70, it should perform admirably against that, even with the, the stub mouse cannon. Then you can get some really nice veterans here on that. Just thanks to dam doing damage to vehicles. Let's see if it penetrates. Indeed, and there you see, just a really nice jump up. In veteran C, every time you hit. Surprisingly accurate here on the move, the Panzer IV. Okay. Can't quite chase that. Will he get out? That's two ET guns. Second one. Ooh, not even this one gets another shot off. So, lucky break there for McBain. T17 needs some time at the shops. And uh, despite the heavy losses, McBain's constantly on the field, doing a really nice job there. Yeah, I do apologize for the frame drops, but I don't want to recast, so we're going to stick with this. I do understand if you're just going to skip this one. No hard feelings there. But for now, getting some nice health back. Excellent play here. Gets out with all models. Beautiful stuff. Manpower conservation is so important in this game. I think it's one of the, I don't not want to say noob mistakes, it, it, I think one of the big things you need to learn about Core 2 is when to stick in an engagement, when it's worth the manpower loss and when it's just you staying in too long and just without gaining anything. Some airborne guards up top. I'm curious to see if we're going to see the LMG upgrade, which I usually prefer, or the because you get 3 DPs as opposed to the guards, only 2 DPs, so it makes them quite potent on long range. God damn you, camera. There we go. But Pope with a really nice position and a stranglehold on the left flank. T70 trying to harass the north, but something scared it off. Oh, never mind. Looks like we had just had a little misclick there. Trying to be a little bit indecisive. Could uh, actually curious. I think he cannot upgrade them because they're not in territory. I think actually that airborne squads in general can be upgraded in enemy territory. So I am not entirely sure about that. Oh, Panzer IV might go after that. No mine on the retreat here. T70 really slow there actually. Is that heavy engine damage? No, just normal engine damage. Seems to be extraordinarily slow. Ah, it's because it's driving backwards with engine damage, so that doesn't help matters. Oh, but we finally missed a, a shot there. And the IL-2 Sturmavik rocket run does some really good damage to the Panzer IV. Are the AT guns in place? No, yes! Oh, the bounce, the miss. He's blitzkrieging away. Oh my god, that was tight. That was tight. So both players getting away for the time being. But that was very close. Jesus Christ. These conscripts holding off two grenadiers all by the lonesomeness, thanks to the green cover. It's a really nice job there. Vet 3 versus Vet 2 and Vet 0. So they've done the Rodina proud. What does Rodina actually mean? If someone could clear that up for me, that'd be very nice. I could Google it, I suppose. But I always forget as soon as I 
ask myself that question. So Pope with a very big map advantage does have a decent amount of fuel, but he's running out of manpower for now, which could mean that he's just tacked up. Yes, indeed. Mechanized armor company are coming up. And oh, actually, changes the Panzer IV to a Stug, which is interesting. I think at this point in the game, you do kind of want the Panzer IV, unless he has some other plan. There's nothing in this doctrine really to, like, no Stug G to support that playstyle in particular right now. Panzer IV would just do a lot better against double this gun. He has had his own fuel for the most of the time. So there's no nothing too scary. He knows the doctrine, there's no heavy call in. So I do question that choice a little bit. Pope can afford basically two T thirty four seventy sixes by now. But Panzer IVs are pretty good against that. Because I think Stooks are a little bit Excuse me, I need to take that call. Excuse that one. I'm waiting for a very important phone call. But that wasn't it. That was just telecom being really annoying as usual. Double this gun opens up on a Panzer IV. Grabs that. Plunks that in the face. The house in the middle still very healthy. So I'm curious as to what he's trying to do with the Stug now. Except he's 70 hunting. But once he's dealt with that. And we've seen the Panzer IV command tank dealing with that just fine. With its high rate of fire. Okay, he gets the first shot in there. Oh, Panzer first bugging out there. But gets it. But now it's basically just a glorified... ...cannon display here. That's not gonna do much against infantry. He can upgrade with the MG, which... ...makes it somewhat effective. Nice grenade, but still no upgrade, actually. Goes for the PPSH upgrade, Jose. Jose? I want to say okay. So it's pretty nice on these, on the right side here, we'll, we'll struggle a bit on the left. There are still some ambush opportunities behind these buildings and everything. So I'm curious to see how he uses that. Um, does he get, he gets fire superiority? But it does, it's no, no DPS increase, it just reduces the accuracy of the target enemy infantry squad. So might come in handy against an LMG Gren. If you have some other support units, but basically, if you use it on a 1v1, it's just a wet noodle contest at that point. Oh, gets lucky, triggers the mine here. Does use it against infantry, but yeah, hasn't really gotten anything out of that. Okay, SC-85 now building. So, that's a pretty heavy anti-tank investment. Double AT gun. Versus a Panzer IV and a Stug. I think I'd still prefer the T-34 because the T-34-76 is not going to struggle too hard with Panzer IV command tanks. And once you get on the rear armor of the Stoke, the Stoke's pretty toast. We haven't got an AT gun itself by McBain. But the show must go on. How has it been faring since we've lost? Looked so four more kills since we last checked that poor bastard, but it's been just hounded by these double AT guns. The left side is disconnected again. MG in a good position, up to 10 kills actually. Good job there, and thanks to the veterans, he is actually good at suppressing immediately. So good stuff there. Expect a rifle nade here. No. Good target switch there, was paying attention. And that, oh Jesus, that command hour, even though they are bad 3 themselves, but I think that just pop, doesn't help, quite help against the SVT bad 3 conscripts there. Stug is waiting for something on the left side, but S85 gets a nice shot on the Panzer IV, right side. How oh, did, did he reinforce that at some point? Must have, because I think he was down to 4. I don't think they can on-field reinforce by some trick. Okay, Panzerwerfer now added to the mix. Not a bad choice. That's a big, that's a hell of a big support weapon blob. So gets his cutoff back under heavy losses. These conscripts are just a terror on this cutoff. Beautiful heavy cover, 
19 kills, vet 3. They're just gonna sit there and have a grand old time. Okay, MG and LMG. So, McBain for the moment playing the victory point game, or at least trying to. So, let's see if that Panzerwerfer hits the spot. Because that's gonna be very important. Okay, yeah, just gets out of the range. Okay, does re rifle nade forces hope to retreat, hard retreat. Kind of surprised by that. But uh, he might have thought he was a bit late on that and just decided to go home early. Airborne guards haven't done much yet. Two kills, but nearly but one though. So they have done some damage. Grenadiers are pushing in. Panzer IV. T-34 now added to the mix, but the Panzer IV is not gonna have a good time against that. But he knows where the AT guns is, are thanks to this Grenadier here. Does get the Stuka observation plate, and the, and the rear arm of the P4 might actually do something. No, still bounces off. S85 pushed back. Oh, P4 needs to keep running. An AT grenade might finish it off. But looks like the fence just about saved it. The AI decides to go around it. T-34 on the base. Stuck's chasing. The Grenadiers know where everything is. The Panzerwerfer is firing. And of course our game's gonna have to lag now. Oh, where's the Panzerwerfer firing? Ah, not quite on target. Was, was firing on the old position. And looks like we lost a, I want to say, a Grenadier. Shook does get out. And T-34 backed off further. And looks like these, yeah, here are the Grenadiers. They got mowed down on the retreat by the Maxims. So nice positioning there. So interesting push by McBain. Panzerwerfer didn't do too much, sadly. So, doesn't get the alpha strike there that he needed to surprise his enemy. Panzer Schürzen just teleporting onto the field. Thanks to the veteran C2. Also, it's better weapon tracking. That's interesting. So, sh I think that means just means better shot at moving targets. Or maybe just accuracy. The wording is not quite as often as clear as it y you'd like it to be, and sometimes when things change, they don't they don't get updated as piously as it wanted to be. So the defensive aura not doing too much here, it has to be said, but they do try their best. They don't have veterancy, and they, these guys are vet three, so that explains a lot. So Oster struggling in this department. T thirty four is gonna. For some time, clear this MG out. K decides to probably jump out in the back. Yes, indeed. He's waiting for the Stuck to make its way over. A nice move there. No panic retreat. K falls back entirely. I was curious if he was just gonna hobble behind the building. T34. Here's the Stuck. Rushing through the undergrowth. Conscripts under fire building. Oh, come on, Gammy. Thank you. So we're up to 16 kills on a Panzer IV, not bad, not bad. Vet 3 Maxim, 16 kills, also not bad. But yeah, these Grenadiers are really struggling here. With all these really nice green cover positions by the Pope. Sandbags everywhere. And in cover, these SVT Grenadiers are just gonna outshine these Grenadiers approaching over open field. Oh, we know where that's going. Goes for the retreat path. That's the problem with the Panzer. If you try to get everything, you usually get nothing. Oh, but the Stuck's in a good position against the T-34. The high rate of fire should push that beauty back. Okay, I say that and then he decides to not shoot again, of course. But believe me, it's pretty decent. Definitely. A oh, the Vet 3 MG might get decrewed here. Nope, gets away. I was ever so lucky. So nice push here by McBain. The Panzer who did opens up some space. But the uh, AT guns are still unsettlingly healthy for the Wehrmacht. 
So can't quite quite dive those in any kind of the sense of an imagination. T34 doing its best. Up to two kills, hasn't done too much yet. Oh, but there we go, you just have to curse the devil. Will get fausted, will he stay for the shot? Okay, tries to take it on the move, but misses. AC-85, forcing off the Panzer IV. And the AT guns are still in decent position to force off the Stoke or prevent it from flanking in. So things are getting scrappy. Our opponents are seizing a sector. Grenadier did make it home after all. And uh, McBain still with decent map control. And we actually lost uh, one of the another one of the conscripts. So McBain did get some value out of his Panzer Werfer eventually. Nine kills. With the help of the Grenadiers, we seem to have achieved successes. Aiden kills now, here we go. Another round of Panzerwerfing. Does try to go for the retreat. Not quite far back enough. And shouldn't try to, because thanks to the SE-85, that would just result in a one-shot. If he tried that to do that from in front of the hedge. Oh, god damn you game. There we go. Or not. Uh, we still do not have an MG upgrade for the Stuk. I actually wonder what he's gonna get with his 150 munitions, uh, fuel, sorry. It's probably gonna be a Panther. But I'm a bit worried about a ram into an IL-2 rocket run. Oh, oh, okay. That was a bit of a waste. There was like no snare, no nothing, it's just a random rocket run. Pretty wasteful there. That is... Okay, it's only 100. I was... I just thought it was like a 200 munitions thing. Uh, does have a two, two minute cooldown. So is unable to utilize that for the time being. T34 gets a good shot in. Stuck finally at one. Ta the heat shield weak point is really, really good. Basically stuns an enemy tank in front of you to give you another shot. Um, okay, but they did change it to that it blinds. But I think a, if it's an assault gun, it's still will stun them. Oh, and here comes the T-34 horde against the Stuk. Does get a nice shot on the lower one, but the top one... Okay, there we go. Now comes the Faust. Good job there. Waits for the Faust until the tank has been damaged. To get that engine damage and can now follow up with the Stuk, but loses line of sight and misses the shot thanks to the lamppost. These guys up to four kills, which is rather unimpressive. SU-85 on the hunt on the base, nearly gets the Panzer IV. Good thing we only semi-missed that. Oh, good hit by the mortar. And the bad three conscripts can't quite finish the job. Get some munitions cash out. Not a bad shout. Stuka close air support, pretty handy. And that will go from 5 to 3 to something we'll see. MG still up top in our house, keeps the northern victory points safe, 297 to 317. So pretty even Stevens here. And that puts that, basically doubles the munitions income on that point. So we now basically have a Stuka close air support every 1, 2, 3, 6 minutes. Six and a half. Engineers should get home, might drop a model. Nope. Engineers decide they want those sweet, sweet munitions to drop that down to two minutes. Well, four minutes. Excuse me. 30, 34 now added to the mix, so there comes a. The horde will come in soon. And I expect some rams in conjunction with the IL 2 rocket run. But well, we seem to have spent our munitions on some things. Might be some mines somewhere. Or more SVTs. No, no SVTs because we haven't rebuilt our conscripts. The nice thing about Soviets is 
you can kind of transition into vehicle play for the late game if you get your guys to bed one and use the capture secure mode. Not something you'd recommend. Oh, we see the dive here. Panzerwerf is a bit out of position and slow. Gets it. Can the MG finish it off? Oh, ne okay, needs the main gun, but miraculously actually just drove past all that without dropping any health. So can get out of there without a Faust. Only gets the abandon though, so a bit unlucky there. And now has to run. Panzer 4 actually on the chase and gets some two decent penetrations in. So that's some nice veterancy for that boy. But yeah, we've got the Panther t together with the uh, uh, Panzer 4 Command or a pretty potent vehicle. Yeah, but here comes the Horde. He did try to flank the thing. Stuka close air support is two minutes away. That Stuka should be going down. Oh, what? Okay, there we go. Out of control. Needs to keep driving or reversing. Reversing would probably be better at this point. Just get that frontal armor behind the tanks and get onto the, the other guy's rear armor. But for now, he's getting some nice rear armor shots on the P4. But thanks to that command already, these boys are pretty sturdy against the 3476s. And the S85 has not been rotated over. Where is it? It is on its way. But it's a bit slow. Two pioneers are gonna try to repair that panther. I still apologize for all these frame drops. And we'll try to figure out what's happening. It's like it's, for me, it's been the last couple of days, it's been a 50 50 chance, and I never know when it's gonna run smooth and when it won't. It's pretty infuriating. Okay, but let's get out with all of his T-34s, which is pretty nice. Gets a Stuck out of that. So Stuck's basically cost the same amount as a T-34 to 80, 90, what, 10? See if it's that actually is true. 390, 10, so 21 manpower for a T-34, but a T-34 is a little bit more useful in terms of multi-purpose. <laughs> S-35 is just looking by while the ZIS gun, which seems to probably be bugged, is just gonna get hammered by these grenadiers. Mortar tries to help out. Okay, there we go. Looks like the model snipe put that thing back on its tracks. So, good stuff there. The bug resolved itself, but the map's still pretty blue. Not bad by McBain. We have We're up to four grenadiers again. We are getting veterancy and we actually have a second airborne squad now. That's interesting. Okay, gets the DP light machine guns. They should perform better now. Let's see. Okay, we are up to seven kills. I imagine that was probably th thanks to a grenade. It's gonna harass the munitions point here. Should get it. Yes, indeed. Uh, nice shot. The Panzer IV command tank actually doing some decent damage here. Well, let's say he's getting some decent penetrations, not necessarily damage. Yeah, Erban got want to run away from that one. So, what up? Uh, IT guns are in the middle. Frame drops are dropping. Oh, that's an aggressive panther. We do have the out close air support available, so maybe he's trying to bait his enemy forward. It's, these guns are just about getting back into position. Should have lost line of sight here. That T-34. Ooh, the bait there. But this this gun's not set up yet. There we go. Pack gun finally added. With a little bit of luck. Oh, throws down the Stuka. But he needs line of sight. Which is going to be an issue. Okay, the Western T-34 gets hit. But gets some nice shots in on these boys. Panzer 4 can't follow that up. Hands of effort, trying to discourage any follow-up in the middle. Recruit, by the way, and red one immediately. So, nice job there. And actually, might... MG doing really well in the north. Keeps that safe. DP... Airborne have to run. 
Middle has been kept safe for now. Panzer IV is rolling up again. We still might see another run if the Panzer IV can spot something. But, oh, okay. Gets the Panzer Tactician. Red 3, by the way. Mobility and rate of fire. So that's pretty nice. Oh, what nice shot in the pack. Will something follow up on this? No, it doesn't seem like he can. Panther's pretty much repaired. And uh, now we're actually seeing the Panther 4 with that veteran C3 and 21 kills to its name. Really, really nice job keeping that thing alive and getting it vetted. And, and now it can start to perform truly terrifyingly. Because it will actually hit its shot more on a regular basis. So it's basically like a big T70 by now. With a bonus aura. How, how much is that actually? 360, 112 population. So pretty heavy on the population cap. Kind of okay in terms of cost. But yeah, Panther is still at 18 population cap, so... There's still a big difference. Actually, 88 to 100 on the Pope, on Pope Coast side. Let's see if it belies me. Oh, there we go. Get some good hits in. Oh, look at that fire rate. Oh my god. Beautiful shots by the Panzer IV. And that is when Code 2 is really my favorite game. It's when you get these units that are okay in the beginning, but not really good. But then just with veterancy, they just go crazy. It's like the... Used to be the, the case with the normal Tiger. With the changes to heavy tanks, the Tiger is now just generally just amazing. But like the standard Tiger used to be like okay-ish when you brought it out, but a little bit overpriced. But if you get that veteran thing, you just feel so rewarded with all the damage you can inflict with that unit. Which there aren't that many units out there that hit that criteria, but just look at it. It's beautiful. I had to rocket run, but sadly no follow up. Oh, the pack gun might get decrewed now though. Interesting angle there, tries to get both tanks, ends up not getting really anyone, but forces the panther out of position. Oh, he tries to stay in the smoke. Nice attack ground here by the Zisk guns. Does get out, but the pack's probably gonna get decrewed here. Oh, yeah, motor gets it. The enemy has destroyed an anti -tank gun. Seems the pioneer's gonna try to rush for that. Oh, I see the fire's pretty low. But he doesn't have anything too much to fear. Could get sniped by the panther, so... Come on, camera. Ah, oh, don't leave me hanging. Oh, but a double miss there. Bit unfortunate. This gun also in support. Oh, SCD-5 gets a nice shot in. The Grand Horde is going to have to do a lot of fausting here. Red 3 T-34 coming in from the angle. But the double Minesweeper Pioneers are not that terrible at repairing. Some nice shots by the T-34. Gets rid of the pack gun. Nicely done. Uh, in the meantime, actually got away with killing that MG at some point. Nice job. But uh, doesn't look like the airborne guards here had anything to do with it. So far they've just sadly ran into fire. And got manned. We did lose the... PPSH variant at some point. I'm sorry for missing that. That might have happened up top. Come on, camera! Uh, there we go. I bet three more is being used to cap. Brave little boys. For now, get away with that. Okay, against the vet, against the vet three LMG grants, they don't want to have anything to do with it. Kind of surprising, actually, just to not hang out in there a little bit longer, but could have called in some T34 backup. Oh, that was underwhelming damage. Probably a bit triggering for McBain. Nice job. Full health. Won't get Fausted. Or better said, won't get engine damage by a Faust. Tries to go for, in for the crush. Doesn't quite get it. But forces them off nonetheless. Grand's in the middle. Thinking better of it. I have to get away now. Is that still the OG MG or is that a new recruit version? 20 kills? Looks like it's the OG version. Okay, Panther came up to the north and... Damn you, camera. Thank you. A new pack gun has been built. I'm actually surprised that he built a pack gun and not a Panther here. He probably thought he needed something more immediate. 
when his tanks went low. Which I can't blame him for. And he has retained the veterancy, so... Oh, this pack needs to get out of there. Gives him a li these little shirts on the side here, so improved armor and weapon tracking. So I still believe it's about hitting mobile units and or shooting on a move. Uh, these vet three conscripts are just holding off these guys so often. But it looks like they were not all of them. They were already quite damaged when he got here. It's only one model in the mud. Whose subscription to life has been cancelled? Oh, come on. Damn you, camera! I want to follow the T-34 glory horde. Charging into the base. He's going in pretty hard. Panther, in the meantime, tries to dive the S-85. So the T-34 is in the base. Oh, he buddy parks in front of the S-85. The bet 3 and S-85 nonetheless. Might want to pop the smoke and use attack ground here. Does get it though. Only one Zisk gun is turned. Panzerwerfer is probably shooting at that. Tries to go for the attack ground but hits the wreck of the S-85. One Zisk survives. Panther goes down. One T-34 on the base went down. The other one got, got out so... Looks like he did get one good idea. Ooh, beautiful crush here by the T-34. How brutal was that? But they do get out. So repairs have been retained. And he's gonna dive the low pack gun. Very nice move there. Gets it. Nice. Really good job by the Pope here. Nice control. Didn't panic at the base dive. Probably knew his opponent was fo focusing on the, the base dive and kind of forgot about everything up top. So the SU-85 was not pulled back. Tried to kite and these, the Zisk guns were out of position. And the Panzer IV actually taking taking this T-34 to town. But he does get out of range. It's gonna probably eat an 18 8 Yes indeed. Oh, but the damage! It's brutal. So these Grenadiers got something. Done enough, not quite. Tries to go for the retreat grenade. Nice attempt. Not quite. As this guns have not been recruited yet. So the T Panzer 4 can get away with it. Fourth T 34 in the build. Vet 2 is gonna dive. Oh, Panzer Werf is out of position again. But just look at that. Look at that Panzer IV going to town on T-34s. That is impressive. Ah, but the hero goes down. Died for the fatherland. Panzer IV back onto this gun. 44 minutes, 197-244. Did we just lose a squad there? No, I don't think we did. Not quite a crush. Nice repairs. Yeah, it needs a lot of repairs now. Does have three engineers. And a lot of them just got manhandled by this Panzer IV, caught out repairing that. And long range the Panzer IV will do the better of that. Pack gun a bit out of position, tries to keep the Panzer Werfer safe. That Panzer Werfer really needs to go back to base in between vo uh, volleys. So yet another T-34 added to the horde. And a very nice safety cushion in terms of fuel here for Pope. McBain. Might be thinking about a second Panzer IV or a Panther, but oh no. He just went too far. Ground attacks coming in. Not quite fast enough here. A pack gun is trying to set up so the dive will get punished, but gets caught out by the Soviet infantry horde. And this is looking grim for McBain now. Panzer IV goes down. Stuck's in the build. And these LMG grants are not having the best of times against that three SVTs and triple DP airborne guards. And I think that's... No, it's just my PC lagging. It's not GG yet. But goes in for another nice crush here. Just McBain with a brutal crush here. Uh, Pope with the brutal crushes. Keeping McBain's manpower just ever so low and it's... Every model counts in his late game to get these vehicles out. 
And if you if you do get concentrated on the vehicles, you will lack in capping power. Looks like we have a new MG up in the north. Try to keep that victory point safe. Oh, but the double miss by the Zis doesn't enable the conscripts to get the engine damage. So here comes the Faust. He tries to follow up with the second T-34. Chooses not to and the Stuck can now use its long range advantage. To try and deal with these T-34s but now goes in because he has not been retargeted. And that Stuck is one shot away from death. Bet three. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. Damn you, game. God damn you. Okay, Stuck doing way better than it should have. But finally gets it, and the D34 horde is now on a base inspection. And it's probably gonna ruin these uh, the Austere's day for now. If he gets rid of that, there will be no more packs. Besides, to just go after the Grenadiers 176 to 233. <laughs> and McBain thinks everything is a joke, which it isn't quite. But that's a whole, whole, sh whole hot load of T-34s. And a wonderful change of the turret MG and the Hull MG is doing actually damage now, which makes the T-34 just a generalist badass that it is. It's one of my more favorite chip balance changes ever. Because this way it can stay cheap without being overbearing against armor. But with the veterancy, it's gonna be really nice. I'm so sorry. So that's the sixth T34, which is quite impressive. McBain hasn't given quite up yet, apparently. So, yeah. I'm gonna eight times through this. If he hasn't surrendered by the 50 minute mark, we're gonna jump this one. There we go, and that will be GG. So McBain said a little bit staying close to BMing here. But GG, nice play by Pope. McBain had some really good... Just before the end game, he made some really nice pushes. But SVT, Grenadiers, uh, Conscripts being the heroes of this battle. 36 kills to their names, just that one squad here. Did lose two of them to the Panzerwerfer. But the Grand struggled quite hard with that. GG. So I apologize for the choppy nature of this one. And then I have to, had to do two cuts in there. And it's not quite to up to our usual standards. But I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. It was still kind of entertaining. Even though my camera just fucked off into the distance yet again so I'll try to fix it for next time I'll, I'll do the last Windows update I don't know I don't think you can roll Windows updates back so I'm just gonna have to go with the next one I think there's another one in the pipe and see if I can find some other fixes to get my FPS back up to the <laughs> even even though it's never been that great but this is just too bad that it's unbearable so let's see, oh, that's just 20, nearly 20,000 damage taken by the Panther of Command tank, the true hero of the Austers here. I disagree with the MVP. 90 kills of Grenadiers, so they have done some decent damage here. But they also bled, bled a lot. Yeah, it's even in the main menu, like, you just can't escape the FPS drops at the moment. Come on. Show us the other side. So as usually, if you have questions about depression or are curious or whatever, or you have just generally any questions, uh, especially about game mechanics, um, let me know, put them in the comments, and I'll see to it that they get answered. 16,000 Xanapa T-34s. Actually, only two of them died. So we probably had like, what, eight? Pretty even, actually, in units killed, units lost, but that usually means it's, that is worse for the Wehrmacht, because since they're, they're lower squad numbers, and the cheaper reinforcements of the um, Soviet Union. You basically just want about a uh, 2 to 1. No, not quite. Let's say 1.3 to 1 KD to be even. Pretty even graph here. So nice to see. Even the drops are quite... That was like a parallel drop. Beautiful. Symmetric dropping should be an Olympic dis discipline. 
Synchronized throwing. <laughs> that might be something we should give awards for. Did actually lose the last conscript, apparently. Wait, no, we saw it in the end. So I'm a little bit confused about that one. We saw it at the end screen with the third 60 kills, or what it was. Or 30 kills, sorry. So we did produce 70, 34, 76, and lost 2. Didn't we have 6 in the end? Oh, it must have got stuck on the population cap. T70 did decently. S85 did surprisingly... Well, not surprisingly well, but didn't have much to do, let's put it that way. But yeah, GG. I'll see you next time. Have an excellent day. Bye-bye.